Hey guys, it's the Wine Loving Bookworm back with your Sunday night book review. I am trying to do this in between football games because we were watching the end of the Rams Saints um, game and they're in overtime. I really, really hope it's a Rams Chiefs Super Bowl, but we will see how that plays out. So, okay, so let's jump in um, to the wine. Tonight I did something a little bit different. Um, this is a not a new wine to me, but it's one I haven't tried in a little while. I'll show you it. It's Mouton Cadet. It's a French um, Bordeaux. And I think I've told you all before that I'm a big fan of French wines, red French wines in particular. And that has a lot to do with my father. He really liked French red wines and introduced them to me, you know, when I became old enough to drink, which, you know, wasn't that long ago. Not at all. Um, anyway, I did, and I really liked them like he did. And I've been thinking about my father a lot lately. He passed away. It'll be two years in August this year. So um, for some reason, I've been thinking about him lately, kind of, you know, been nostalgic about it. And I saw that wine in the store and I thought, I'm going to get it, you know. And he, like I said, he introduced this to me, but I have not had it in a while. Um, I've had the Beaujolage Village, Village, God, I can't freaking talk tonight. Beaujolais Village, <laughs> um, a couple times. I've, I've had that. But this one I have not had in a long time. And it was kind of like sitting there on the shelf. I've been thinking about my father. So I'm like, I'm going to pick it up. So let's give it a shot and see if I like it as much as I did, you know, just a couple years ago when I was 21. Yep, that's good. <laughs> really light. That's what I like about the French wines. They're like super light, just super they taste good. So anyway, pick up some Mouton Cadet if you see it in the store. So now let's move on to the book. I read the Bird Box book, which unless you've been living under a rock, you have at least heard about the movie on Netflix, if not seen it. Um, Star Sandra Bullock. I watched it, I think around Christmas time is when I watched it. And I wasn't a huge fan of the movie for a multitude of reasons, which I'll a little bit touch on. But um, but then I saw the book, and I didn't even know it was based on a book, and it was for sale on Amazon for like two bucks. So I thought, why not? Um, so anyway, so I downloaded the book. Let's see if I got. Ooh, wait a second here. Keeps flipping my phone. My Kindle keeps flipping. But that's the cover, and you can see that's kind of Sandra Bullock with her eyes covered. Um, so anyway, it was written by John Mallerman. It's fiction. And the author, he's a novelist, short story writer, and a singer and songwriter of the band called The High Strung. Never heard of them. Have any of you heard of The High Strung? I don't know. Um, he kind of, he's written like 15 books or something, but not many of them have been published. He kind of writes them in, in between touring with his band. Um, so obviously... I think it's safe to say this is the most famous one. He's won three awards for Bird Box. Um, awards that I hadn't really ever heard of before, but awards nonetheless. So the basic outline of the story is there is some, and I'm going to be real general here, there is some sort of phenomenon that occurs on Earth, and neither the book nor the movie really tells you exactly what it is, but if you see it, you kill yourself. Bottom line, something comes. We don't know if it's an alien, if it's some kind of, you know, um, second coming, you know, like a apocalypse, re apocalypse revelation, doomsday kind of thing. We don't know. But if you see it and it's invisible to kind of everyone else, I think, but if you see it, you kill yourself. So in the movie, they run around with blindfolds on, they're, you know, in the, in the houses, not looking at anything. So the book comes uh, from the perspective of Mallory, and she's pregnant. Her sister dies from seeing whatever this thing is, and she ends up at a house with a bunch of people she doesn't know, and kind of the book goes from there. So that's the very basic, basic premise of the movie and the book. Sounds kind of interesting. I didn't think they did it exactly well. I didn't think the book or the movie really hit the mark, but... Um, if you kind of have watched the movie, some of the differences in the book, um, the movie really focused on how people who were, you know, mentally unstable, insane, for lack of a better word, 
you know, how they viewed whoever these creatures are. Um, they didn't really have the same reaction that everybody else did. They didn't have the same, they wouldn't kill themselves. That was really focused on in the movie, hardly at all in the book. Her relationship with Tom in the movie was much bigger of a deal than it was in the book. There was barely anything there in the book. Um, and But the book did kind of focus on more of what the creatures were, in a way. It never told you what they were, but it gave you more description, feeling of what they were. You still were left like, are these aliens? Are these some kind of messengers from God or Satan or I don't know, you know? Didn't really tell you that at all. So you're left kind of wondering, and that's something I never really liked about the movie and the book. But at the same time, when they do tell you what they are, sometimes that also falls flat in a lot of movies and books. So I don't know. It's a balancing act. Um, there are also little things, like I think in the, the movie, a guy tried to view the creatures through a home security system. And in the book, that was actually done with like a VHS camera. Um, so little things like that, little changes. But the big things were her relationship with Tom, the kind of the insane people, and then the kind of description of the whatever these, this phenomenon was, these creatures. Um, what I liked did expand into what these creatures were to a degree. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe. You'd really have to read the book. It's, it's more of the feeling of them. They could actually, and in the movie, this wasn't such a thing. Like once you were in the house, you were kind of safe in the movie. That wasn't really the, that wasn't really how it was in the book. They could get in the house. So um, there's all these different things they set up to try to prevent that. So there was a much, a much a bigger understanding, a much more descriptive kind of narrative of what these things were, although it didn't actually tell you what they were. That sounds weird, I know. You'd have to read the book, but there was more of an understanding of it, which I liked. Um, it also told, because there's two children, she's pregnant, as I told you, and there's another woman pregnant in the house. So she has these two children, and it told how they raised them um, to be really sensitive to these creatures, really sensitive to sound, like I said, you if you see them, you kill yourself. So they have to walk around with blindfolds on outside. She really taught them how to recognize sounds like very quickly. And they're very good at that. So it taught you how she raised these children, you know, and really cruelly sometimes, in my opinion. But this is a survival situation, you know, this is not a normal childhood. So I found that really interesting. Um, the book or the movie didn't go into that at all. Um what I didn't like, again, the ending, I just didn't like it. There were some tweaks in the book that I actually liked um, that were different than the movie. But overall, I just felt like there was something missing, you know. And that was my other thing I didn't like. In the book, in the movie, you just came away feeling like there's something missing there. Um, so anyway, that's, I didn't like that. So if you haven't watched the movie... I would say go ahead and watch it. Why not? It's streaming on Netflix. It's free. I mean, free-ish if you have Netflix. And it's watchable. It's decent. I actually thought the whole thing was watchable until the end. I just didn't like the end. But, you know, let me know if you have a different opinion. And the book, the there were parts of the book I hated more than the parts of the movie. <laughs> I'll just say that. I mean, I'm not going to give away everything. But there was some stuff in there that I thought was just, I didn't like it at all. I mean, but there were some things that I liked a lot more than the movie. You know, they, they were very different. They, it was the same story, but they were very different. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say don't. You know, this isn't like a do not read, do not watch thing. I would say watch it and read it and give me your opinion. Let me know what you think. So anyway, um, moving on. Next week, I will be reading The Woman in Cabin 10. Uh, my mom recommended this book to me. So I'm going to give it a shot. I don't really know anything about it. So I'm just going to not look at it, not read the synopsis. I'm just going to go in cold and see what I think about it. So, all right. So that's it for me tonight. I'm going to go watch, hopefully, the Chiefs beat the Patriots. Um, and pick yourself up some Mouton Cadet because it's great. And I especially like it because it reminds me of my father. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next Sunday. Cheers. <laughs>